I hope you brought your appetite for Honda because I got a full-on treat for you guys today, starting with the Civic Hybrid. We're going to talk about Acura, Honda, what's coming in 2024 from the horse's mouth. I just came off of a press conference media briefing from Honda themselves, so I got the smorgasbord of treats to line up for you guys. Smash the like button and let's get into it. <laughs> Check this out. We are in for a treat today. We're going to break down this uh, very brief press release. It is brief, but it's so dense with information from the MDX to the Odyssey to the Civic to the, the electrification front, etc. I can't wait to talk about it. But the story for me and the story for you and the thumbnail is the new Civic. This is not only the new Civic Hybrid, but it's our first look, ladies and gentlemen, at the refreshed Civic. What I'm going to do is pull it up side by side with the current Civic, so it gives you a better idea on how to compare it. This Civic Hybrid at the bottom will be going on sale in North America in the summertime. Stay tuned for my driving impressions. But the Civic on top, this is actually the Civic Hybrid that's been available only as a hatchback in Europe for probably about a year, maybe even longer at this point. And it has a two liter hybrid system, two motor. Um, it has about 180 horsepower and over 200 pound feet of torque. And it gets really good fuel economy. Now we don't have EPA figures yet, but expect this to have easily, easily over 40 miles per gallon while giving us really good performance. This is just a slightly detuned hybrid system compared to what we have in the Accord hybrid. All right, so we have new wheel design. So this image, this is a really, really high quality image. Um, so I'm able to zoom in and give you guys details. So let's start with the wheels. These wheels are all new. I haven't seen this design before. It's almost, it, it, to me, it looks like rockets taking off at each spoke, which is pretty neat. This is a hatchback as well. The Civic Hybrid will be available as a hatchback in North America, as well as a sedan. So I want to show you the next image real quick. Let's boost that up and check this out. Sport Touring. I believe that the Sport Touring currently is only available in the hatchback in North America with the 1.5 turbo. And you can give that a six-speed manual or the CVT. Check this out, the same hybrid logo that we have on the Accord and CRV. And we'll talk about Accord and CRV today as well. There's a lot of news about those vehicles. All right, so we have parking sensors in the back. Sport Touring is the highest grade for the Civic, not counting the Type R. Uh, so keep that in mind. Type R is more performance flagship. Uh, so let's get into comparing the old Civic uh, pre-refresh, which is up top compared to the refresh model. Actually, I don't know what to think about it yet because I haven't seen it in person. So let's start with the headlights because the headlights look to be slightly updated here. Now, this is a European spec that we're looking at at the top because it's hybrid to hybrid, right? But this might be a slightly higher quality LED uh, high beam right here or, or low beam. Can't quite tell. You can see this is more, to me, it looks a little bit cheaper compared to the Euro spec. Seemingly, they've gotten rid of that honeycomb um, front grill, the top grill. I kind of liked it, but I know some people did not. Now, they still kept some honeycomb to it, um, but they've really changed the dimensions of it. Before, it really flowed into the headlights. Now we have this extra plastic piece separating the headlights from the grill. This looks smoother and a little bit cleaner to me. What do you guys think? Do you like this extra eyelid, this bottom eyelid that we have going on? I'm not quite sold on it yet, but let's look at the bottom and compare and contrast. The bottom corner, it looks like uh, fog lights might be completely gone because it is not factored into this aerodynamic piece at the corner. And this is kind of pushed forward. It kind of feels like a very strong chin going uh, from the corner of the headlight down to the edge of the, the bottom grill area. And look how much grill there is, but only this bottom portion allows air to go through. So it's mostly decorative. And I don't know, for me, what I'm liking is the top, the, the current that we, we have right now compared to the new model without the fog lights. Um, so 
it's definitely personal preference. Now they did add body coloring at the very bottom of the chin, paint matched, but they got rid of the paint matched kind of that wraps around right here, right? So take it or leave it. I'll see you guys down in the comments below. The Civic will still drive the same. And now we just finally get our taste of this hybrid. Now, going back to the, the back here, these taillights look to be about the same. And this rear bumper area right here looks a little different to me um, compared to other Civic uh, sedans that we have right now on the market. Those are the only images I have for you guys. You're gonna have to use your imagination for the rest of it. And it's not going to take a whole lot of imagination. We're gonna talk about sales last because most of you don't find it as interesting as I do. All right, so getting into Honda. Honda will begin sales of two zero emission vehicles in 2024. The all new electric Prologue SUV, uh, which is made by General Motors at the uh, Ramos Rizme plant in Mexico. And then you also have the CRV fuel cell vehicle. This is gonna be very low volume. Um, they're using a next generation fuel stack that is going into production, I think this month. Um, it, but it's also a plug-in, I feel like it's, a, it's technically a hybrid, right? Because it's a battery electric as well as fuel cells. So it's a hybridization of those two technologies instead of gasoline, right? So it is a hybrid in theory, but they're just calling it a fuel cell vehicle with a plug-in range on it. Um, so more details will come, I think, pretty soon on the CRV hybrid. So stay tuned for that. So, sorry, CRV fuel cell. Stay tuned for that. Speaking of CRV hybrid, CRV hybrid is the best selling hybrid in North America. They sold 360,000 uh, CRVs last year. And I know I'm getting to the sales a little bit, but it surprised me when Honda said it was the best selling hybrid. Now, Honda doesn't sell as many hybrids as Toyota, for example, but a single model, the Honda CRV outsells any other hybrid model in the United States. All right, the prologue is going on sale in the coming months, initially focusing on sales in California and ZEV states, along with BEV friendly markets like Texas and Florida. I do see a ton of BEVs down here, as well as the, the weather is good. So it, it, you know, it promotes EVs and a lot of people come down and they visit and they really just drive around their own town. They don't take too many trips. But anyways, that's I'm getting off topic here, but Florida is a good place for EVs in my opinion. Um, and then a nationwide rollout will follow with the initial allocation. So we could see a nationwide uh, rollout by the end of 2024 for the, the prologue. Um, there were some interesting questions about the prologue um, right here. Uh, one, one of the attendees, I didn't ask any questions because I had to leave early and yeah, newborn, newborn stuff. So uh, one of the questions was how can Honda and Acura get the volume they need from General Motors since General Motors can't even provide the volume that they uh, put out there or, or, or said that they were going to achieve and they're nowhere close to achieving those num numbers for EVs, General Motors. Now, Mamadou said that their supply will meet demand. They're very confident that they're not going to oversupply or undersupply. And I think that's, that's, I mean, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but that's, to me, that's smart. I don't think they're going to have a whole lot of prologues or ZDXs available. Uh, just because the market's really cooling off for EVs. So let's get back into the press release. The Civic lineup will receive styling and feature enhancements for 2025 model year, including the Civic Hybrid and Sedan and Hatchback. So for feature enhancements, I have no idea what they're talking about there. Maybe a bigger screen, maybe a Google built-in, things like that. It's, it's hard to say. The Civic's already a really good package overall. All right, a uh, Civic Hybrid will comprise 40% of model sales when it launches in summer, increasing hybrid volume for the brand, which already achieved record hybrid sales in 2023. Um, so with that sort of volume, they could they could probably outsell the Corolla and Prius combined, not the normal Corolla, the Corolla Hybrid. So that is quite impressive. And 40% of Civics are gonna be hybrid. So you're gonna see incredible fuel economy coming for those hybrids. Now, as a family man with a growing family, you know I just had the newborn uh, addition to the family, Little Kirk. You can call him Baby Abe as well. He goes by many names. He's excited for the new Odyssey. Now, it's not an all new Odyssey. It is just going to receive styling and the technology enhancements to maintain its competitiveness in a minivan segment. 
So as much as I want a, a, a Odyssey hybrid, it doesn't look like it's coming any time soon. Electrification and sustainability updates. Okay, well, we, we already talked about earlier in this week, uh, the Zero series for Honda, their EVs, and one of them is coming to production in 2026. Watch that video because I'm not going to recreate that same sort, of, so same sort of lengthiness here in this video about their ZEV vehicles. Acura, though, guys, there's worth there's things worth celebrating here. We'll, we'll dust over the ZDX. I'll probably get to drive it sometime here in the first half of 2024. Um, you can buy them 100% through their online portal called Omnichannel. From my knowledge, it still has to be delivered to you from a dealer. So you can do it all online. Um, but I think you still might have to receive that car from a dealership anyway. So I, I don't want to get into the details here because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for me, but customers can begin placing orders for the ZDX starting in February. All right. The MDX, the best selling Acura of all time, the MDX will receive significant enhancements, including styling changes doesn't need styling changes. So I'm interested to see what they do to the styling because I think the MDX still looks amazing uh, after being on the market for three years. Uh, the addition of the Bang & Olufsen Premium Audio. Rest in peace, ELS Audio. You know, I just came out of, oh, the TLX Type S and the ELS in there. You know, I wasn't really feeling it. I don't think it's as good as the ELS and the MDX. That's probably why. Um, and I had just got out, here's the thing. I had just got out of the, not really a fair comparison, but the Burmeister sound system and the Maybach, uh, or Maybach GLS 600. So maybe that's why I wasn't in, that super impressed with it. Also, also I'm in the TX 500 H this week with the Marky Mark Levinson in it. And it sounds so good. It sounded better in my opinion than that Burmeister and the Maybach. Uh, as well as the ELS audio in that uh, TLX Type S. So I'm excited to hear the Bing & Olufsen sound system. Now, it is also getting, here's here's what's uh, exciting. It is also getting Google built-in, right? We saw Google built-in for the first time on a Honda Acura product on the new Accord. Um, now, it's also getting Acura Watch or more advanced Acura Watch. It currently has Acura Watch. Now, the you know, here's a drum roll. Here's a, this is one of the most exciting things I have for you guys today. The MDX is the first, besides the, the Integra, is the first vehicle to ditch that true touch interface. Rest in peace, touchpad. No one's going to lament your passing. Now we have a touch screen. We're going back, back to touch screens, right? Because they work and they're simple. There's no learning curve to them and it allows for more usable center console space. So they're going to rework this center console as well on the MDX. Bravo, bravo. Now, rotary dials and touchpads, they can work fairly well if implemented correctly. Just uh, I wasn't a big fan of Acura's True Touch interface and the TLX had it and I couldn't use a touch screen, even though they updated the screen on the TLX Type S and the TLX. Beautiful 12-inch screen. Can't use the full screen for Android Auto and I couldn't uh, use the touchscreen. I had to use the touchpad for Android Auto. Like that's a headache and a half. Anyways, watch my review on the TLX. It's not that big of a deal that I'm, I'm roasting it for its touchpad, but it's gone going forward on new Acura products. The RDX, hello, RDX receives upgrades to enhance its appeal and functionality. Now, what does it need to improve its functionality for it's already have it already has such a huge amount of cargo space on it uh so i'm not quite sure there but to enhance its appeal we know we would love to have a super handling all-wheel drive 300 plus horsepower uh type type s model right from the two liter that would be unbelievable that's very very exciting Speaking of more Acura bombshells that are exciting, all new Acura crossover will debut later this year, positioned at the gateway of the lineup alongside the Integra. Think of this as the uh, HRV personified as an Acura. I've been asking for this vehicle for years. Acura is finally delivering it. What do I think of the powertrains in it? Well, it'll be the same as the Integra. 
So you'll have a Type S more than likely as well of this with the two liter, possibly over 300 horse. Probably, you know, the 10 speed automatic would be my guess. I don't think they would put a six speed manual in a entry level crossover. Base model will have one and a half turbo hybrid, sorry, one and a half turbo CVT, non-hybrid. Uh, and then you could see the two liter turbo as an option. So Acura needs it. Unfortunately, just like the Integra, it'll have a CVT as the base transmission, more than likely. Stay tuned for that. Hopefully they just give it a 10 speed. Call it a day. Call it a day because, you know, the RDX has a 10 speed, but they need to make money and the CVTs apparently are cheap to make. So it is what it is. So get excited for that. Can't wait to debut that new Acura crossover, what they needed in their lineup for a long, 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 long time. All right, let's get into sales. You guys have made it this far. Um, Honda finished up over 30% year over year sales in 2023. Now 2022 was abysmal for them. They're hoping to be about 10% up in 2024 compared to 2023. Moving into 2024 for Honda, the brand of Honda, not Acura, so Honda only badge vehicles, they want to realize sales of 1.3 million units and the Acura brand will aim for 150,000 units. That will mean a sales increase for American Honda ranging from 10 to 15% compared to 2023. They know that there are some challenges in 2024 with high interest rates. So that will be interesting to see not only how Honda navigates these un tested waters, but how the entire automotive segment does. American Honda is entering 2024 with a strong inventory of both cars and trucks, maintaining a strong position to continue sales momentum in 2024. So <laughs> I don't know if you can hear Abe screaming in the back, but that is exciting for Honda to have a volume back. Uh, that's probably the dealers crying, right? They don't want too much volume so that they can, you know, have their markups. So he's probably, Abe's is probably representing the dealers right now. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, now they don't mention it in here uh, at all, but in the press briefing, they had a render of, and I couldn't take screenshots, you know, they frowned upon that, but they had a render um, looking down on a new Honda Passport. This, to me, from look, I mean, it was it was kind of like a zoomed out image, and it looked like it could have been hand drawn. So take everything what I say with a grain of salt. And it was kind of like looking down on the vehicle from the rear left quarter, um, and the passport was like off road, looking down into a canyon, kind of like a Grand Canyon sort of thing. Um, but from the looks of it, it looked more boxy way more boxy compared to the current passport. Um, to me, from the from the design I was getting, it kind of reminded me of the Bronco Sport, but as a passport, it's going to be bigger, right? So that could be coming for Honda. And I think they said in twenty by the end of 2025, we'll have this new, more rugged, more capable passport. Um, body on frame? I don't think so. I, you got it. You wouldn't have a snowball's chance on Honda developing a body on frame platform. The only way that that would happen is if they move other vehicles to it, like the Ridgeline. But now, nah, this is Honda. They're ultra conservative, and they've been more conservative than Toyota. I feel like lately. So, with that being said, I'm excited for 2024 and beyond for Honda. I'm excited for the new Civic Hybrid, new uh, refreshed Odyssey, updates to the MDX. I can keep going. Uh, let me know what you're most excited for. I'll see you in the comments below. And speaking of Honda, I picked up, I think, is this my first Honda ever? I think I bought my first Honda today. I bought a slightly used 2023 Honda Grom. If you're not sure what a Grom is, it's a 125cc mini bike. And in 2022, they added a fifth gear to it. They added a little bit more torque and horsepower. It's almost got, I think, about 10 horsepower now. Um, and it's just an absolute joy to ride that thing. 
I rode it from Fort Myers back down to here. I picked it up at a Ducati BMW dealership. It was traded in there. So I'll talk, I'll talk more about my experience and whatnot, buying it, uh, and more about riding impressions here in a little bit, but I can't wait to customize it and do some vlogs on the channel with my first ever Honda. Um, and this is going to be so much fun. Motorcycles make me just as happy sometimes more happy than cars. So stay tuned. I can't wait to add motorbikes to the channel here in 2024. Smash the like button if you haven't. I appreciate you. Subscribe for more Honda updates. Uh, we got so much coming down the hatch this year from Honda as well as all the other Japanese automakers, Korean automakers, domestic and European. I'll cover as much as I possibly can for a single person uh, single person business. All right. Thank you guys. I need to catch up on sleep, uh, with the newborn back in my life. So thank you guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.